What's up guys, I here and in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make an auto updater with an XML file in C Sharp. So I have the auto updater here and I have my XML file here which is going to read out get the information from that file and then if the version online or in this uh, video it's right here on my PC locally uh, if the online version uh, is newer then we will be downloading something and if it's not then we will not be downloading something so this is interesting if you have for example a software and you don't want to provide uh, and you want to provide auto updation I don't know if there's such a word updation and you don't want them like sending all the files or just uh, saying yeah go to the uh, website and download it because that's uh, inconvenient or yeah it's it's really annoying if you have to if I have to go download somewhere I won't ever do it I think because it's really annoying so yeah let's look at the um, let's look at the program and process so I'm gonna be running it and just to show you we're going to download this default ASP from W3 schools so the online version is for, as you can see right here, here's the app name and app, uh, this is how the file is supposed to be saved, just so the program knows itself so, uh, always, and you don't have to um, update the updater to change something in how the program is called when you save it. So as you can see, the current version is also for, you can see it right here, the current version is for, and the online version is for, therefore, we don't update so however if I change this one to 5 I yeah, will be updating the program obviously once it's running of course it says new version available now we're updating so it's downloading the file and it has it so update was successful and we can also see here it gets the data from the version and here's the app but we can't run it because it's an ASP file I just called it like this for presentation purposes so let's look into the program we need a XML file location so here would be the full path of your website for example and the XML file at the end next we have all the information we want to read out uh, I have them as such a block so I can have the version the name the location the file name the file name I said is appxc so this program knows how it's supposed to be saved so we need to use system.net for downloading and system.xml.link for reading the XML document. So we first make an X document, um, yeah, basically object, and we um, assign it. Uh, we assign it to load the XML file we just uh, made up here, or we give the location here. And next we define an element a variable for reading the descendants, that's what it's called. So if you're just having this part, then you're having this part. To get the inside, we have to um, get the name element that nodes. So right here we have um, string concat. So basically um, with this we're getting the string from the variable and to get not just because if we would leave the the element nodes out we would get this right so therefore we need the name element dot nodes to get what's inside and we assign it to name and we do the same for version location and file name but for version we convert it to an int and assign it to an int this is the online version this is the C version which is also um, an int so we can compare them later on right here and see which one is greater and also what I'm doing here is writing out the information so the name of the app, online and current version, location and file name just to see everything I like. I like it ordered and you know it's just me but yeah, you don't need even to show the window to somebody who is auto updating so because this is just uh, some back end process and people don't need to see it and uh, next 
we have uh, yeah it's a new version available and we're using a web client and then we client dot download file the location of the file which we found in the XML and the file name uh, which is also in the XML and uh, it shows us how to save it so the file name apexc will be what the file is going to be called once it's downloaded so even if it's called something like ABCDE, uh, w once we download it, it will be called this, uh, like this. And yeah, we're basically done, and that's it. So how are you going to implement it in your program? So what you want to have inside your main program is this part. So if the new version or the online version is newer, then you return a true, and then you basically have an if statement where you ask, um, where you get to know if the online version is newer. And afterwards, you simply run a second process which starts the auto updater, which is just downloading, which is just doing this part, uh, downloading the file and replacing it with the old one. So once you run the auto updater, you have to close your main program also and in your auto updater you at the end put uh, process start and file name basically the location and file name where you save it right so yeah i hope this helps you and see you guys next time i'll see if i make a library with all my mysql uh, comments and stuff uh, just so you have access to it um, easier and with this one also like something i don't know how to dot uh, net library, I don't know yet. We'll see just so it's easy because I'm often using this too and I don't want to rewrite the code all the time. <coughs> I want to have working code and use it all over again, like I do with the hashing and AES encryption, you know. So, yeah, I thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Peace out.